the infirmary for the past five and a half years. Um, and then I worked part time in our education center for that same span of time doing educational programs for the public. So when our former education director retired, I was promoted to education director. That was just a few months ago and I'm absolutely loving the position. Uh, I get to create new educational programs. I get to um, meet new classes, new students every day. Um, some of our favorites are garden groups and libraries because we meet such an amazing mix of people um, and basically share my love for these birds with other people. Here our education center is set up sort of as a visitor center whereas other times of the year it's set up as a classroom. So we offer educational programs in this classroom year round. You can book with us through the Education Center office. Our phone number is 908-647-1091, or you can email education at the rapturetrust.org uh, to sign up for an education program. So this is typically set up as a classroom. We've got a bunch of exhibits on the wall that stay here year round. And then we've got some tabletop exhibits that we take out just for um, open house education. So these tabletop exhibits that we take out just for the open house days, uh, it's free to come in here. We usually put out a craft, a few coloring pages, touch table full of avian artifacts and implements that you are able to touch and get your hands on. That way uh, kids can, and grownups can explore that you can feel the difference between uh, a diurnal raptor feather and an owl feather. Uh, go ahead and try their hand at our Raptor Trust version of operation. <laughs> um, go ahead and see some of the things that we have actually found on birds. Some birds have been injured by these implements. So we want to make people aware that, you know, even small pieces of trash can cause a big impact on these individual birds. So we get a lot of kids that come in and they're very interested. It's really nice to see that a lot of the students uh, and kids that come in to visit us know more than their parents. They're the driving force behind getting the family to come out here. So I find that sometimes it's the students who are better informed than the adults. Um, and they really wanna jump in and start to help. They wanna do something beneficial. Um, and we try to spread the message that while it's great to pick up garbage, to go clean up parks and areas, um, to put up bird saver stickers on windows, the best thing that they can do is continue to inspire that interest in the adults, in the other children around them, in everyone that they meet, because the more people value these birds, the more people value the elements of their environment and the things around them, the more collectively we can do as a community to maintain these fragile ecosystems. All right, thank you. So this is Keely. Keely is a 21-year-old red-tailed hawk, and they get the name from the reddish rufous color on their tail. They're very common here in New Jersey, though Keely is a western variety of red tail. She was actually not found in New Jersey. She was found in another state. And when they realized that she would not be able to be released, they kept her as an education bird and sent her to an education center here in New Jersey, from which she was then later transferred to us at the Raptor Trust. So Keely is a mature red-tailed hawk at 21 years old. She has exceeded her typical natural lifespan. <laughs> um, but they can live a very long time in captivity. So Keely is a healthy bird. She looks fantastic right now. She's just past her fall molt, so all of her feathers are looking beautiful. And she has got a bit of a head tilt because she is blind in her right eye. So she uses that left eye to look above and around her. All of the birds that we have here at the Raptor Trust as permanent residents, so the birds that visitors see when they walk around, are here because they have permanent disabilities that prohibit them from being releasable back into the wild. So we have a variety of different a variety of different conditions that cause birds to become permanent residents here. In addition to the birds that our visitors see on display, we have a 
large collection of cages, small rehab cages and large flight and conditioning cages for our birds that are being rehabilitated um, and are actively getting ready for release. Each species seems to have a different injury that kind of goes hand in hand with it. We see a lot of lead poisoning in vultures. Um, we'll find impact injuries in Cooper's hawks. Netting seems to be an issue for great horned owls, especially things like soccer nets um, or fishing line that they may not see at night when they're hunting or they may not fully understand when they catch a glimpse of.